Happy Wednesday! It's Lisa. I feel like a news broadcaster today. When you see the setup, you will see. All right, I'm trying to do something again with the camera. Thanks. Okay. I need to make it go so we can see better. Hold on. I'm still learning how to do this setup. Okay, this is a great day. Happy Wednesday. Um, is it Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday, October 28th. I'm so excited because every second of every day, God is doing more and more in this ministry, in this life, in this time, and I am just trying to hold it together because I'm so excited. I want to scream. I want to just, first of all, thank God for this day. Thank Him for giving us this medium of opportunity. Um, thank Him for helping us grow each and every day in what we're called to do individually and as a group and we thank you father that we continue just to be at your command everything that you want us to do every second of every day because as we trust you and lead lead with what you're telling us to lead with then it all works out so i'm really excited um thank you in jesus name we pray all right today i always want to start on a new topic and i start going and then the lord says and so then I read the devotional for the day, and the Lord says, just in time, the same thing that we're going to read, what we're going to do. So today's topic is faith, but every day we're going to um, work on what we just learned the day before, which was like righteousness and our identity. The whole point of why I'm here is to help people know who they are in Jesus and to live victoriously in every area of their life. Um Again, I feel like a TV broadcaster because of my hair is a little different and of this board back here. Anyway, I just think it's fun. My website is kingworldwide.com. And the reason why I'm telling you is because every single Periscope that we do, the Lord said to save it and put it on YouTube. And I haven't learned quite yet how to edit, but he said stop worrying about that and just get it on there because I just added a Periscope that my nephew, who is six years old, and I did... A Saturday ago and I had a friend of mine Wade Starnes edit it for us because the volume was down you should just go to my website and go to the YouTube channel just to see that it is priceless how a young child it reminds me of how Jesus was how a young child can be so full of God with so um, so much anointing and peace and confidence in God and it's just really exciting so on my website, at the top right-hand side, there is a YouTube um, channel that you can click on and get into all the YouTube broadcasts. Supermodel for Jesus is the title, and all the periscopes that we've done and continue to do because it's a teaching process, and it's a learning on how others can live for Jesus and live in victory um, so he can come back and we can all live forever in eternity in victory. And I know my mom's given me lots of hearts today, and I'm so grateful. Thank you. It's a great day because this is a great message. Okay, so today's devotional, I'm not going to read, well, I might read a little bit of it. It's, it's called, um, we're not civilians, but the, the uh, scripture is Hebrews 11.6, and it's without faith is impossible to please God. Okay, I've read that scripture a lot of times, and I wasn't quite sure what that meant. So, I mean, how it applied to me. So, we're going to go into a little bit on how to understand faith, how to understand righteousness, and how it does apply. So the story is from Gloria Copeland, and it's from their Pursuit of His Presence, October 28th. And it wasn't my goal to read their devotional every day, but every day it's so good, and the Lord said to read it. So I am being obedient. I, I'm not a big fan of people reading, um, because we can all read ourselves, but hopefully the goal is that people can listen to these YouTube videos and Periscope um, later on and can be listening to the Word of God and not really focusing on me or this board it's more about hearing the word of God. So he talks about a story. Uh, she talks about a soldier in a boot camp will jump out of bed before dawn every morning to run and do push-ups. He may, he may not like it, but he'll do it because his commanding officer has ordered him to do it. He endures the discomfort because he knows it's an inescapable part of military life. So it's his duty. It's his, it's his goal, and it's what he's supposed to do. A civilian, on the other hand, like you and me, unless you're in the Army, thank you, Thank you, or the military. Thank you for serving our country. We're forever grateful. I want to give a shout out to my grandfather who's in heaven. He flew, um, uh, is it B-13, the bomber planes in World War II and not even one scratch, but he did the right thing and that's why we're free today and we'll continue to be free. 
His name is um, Michael Dunford. Love him. Okay. A civilian, on the other hand, might start an exercise program, but when the going gets tough, his muscles feel sore and his schedules get busy. He'll just quit exercising. If someone asks him about it, he might just shrug it and say, oh, I tried it, but it didn't work for me. You know, that's a lie. Some Christians are like that. They hear the word of faith, hear the word of God, and they think, well, I'll try that. But then when they hit hard times come, they give up. So I'm here to tell you that's not what you're supposed to do. I'm here to tell you that the victory is real and the victory is now. And the word of God is the answer. But that's not how it should be. After all, we're not civilians. We're soldiers. We don't try faith. We make it our lifestyle. I guess that should be the title of one of my periscopes because when you make it your lifestyle, your life changes. Rather, it's the same thing when you try to eat right or exercise. When you make it a lifestyle, your life will change. But the thing is, I know I've been a re really tough on the past few periscopes, and I'm. it's because I really care. It's because I know what it's like to be a Christian for year after year after year and continue to have challenges and not understand why they're happening, thinking, oh, it must just be God's plan, but it's not. And so that's why I get really passionate. It's not God's plan for you to live in defeat. It's not God's plan for you to have cancer, sickness, disease. It's not. And, you know, people are so ingrained with Satan's deception. The flu is not God's plan. It's not normal. We are of the body of Christ. Did you ever read in the Bible, even if you don't, you're not a believer, have you ever heard of Jesus having one ailment? No. He hardly even, he didn't even speak wrong words. He was about his father's business. So anything that not, is not good is not what we're supposed to be taking. And if it's overtaking you all the time, could be two things. Two, you're a threat to Satan. Three, he wants to take you out. John 10.10 10 says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, we're not have that. Jesus came to have, give us life and that more abundantly. And that's what I'm living and that's what you're going to be living if you're not already. All right, so back to the um, devotional. It's a lifestyle. We walk by faith whether it's hard or easy. We don't do it so we'll be blessed. We do it because we're determined to be pleasing to Jesus. He is our commander in chief. And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I'm going to help you understand what this means. Of course, we will end up blessed if we walk by faith. We'll end up healed and delivered, prospered in every area of life because God promised we would. That, however, is not our motivation. We're motivated by our desire to serve the Lord. And if you're not a believer yet, I'm telling you, please just watch my periscopes because you're going to want to be a believer. There is no other way to live except with Jesus Christ ruling and reigning in your life. And don't feel like, I think a lot of people think, well, if I serve your Jesus, then I'm going to have to stop this or stop that. Let me just tell you that's a lie. You start serving Jesus and you give him all your heart and you give him some time in, in his word, he'll change you and you won't want to do the things that you are doing. And you might say, well, I don't believe that. Well, I'm telling you, it happened. It happened to me and he'll change you. But for those people that think you have to stop everything and then know Jesus, it's not possible. So to stop living that lie, Satan wants to keep telling you that so you'll never be free. The life with Jesus is your father. God, our father created us just like Jesus and he wants you to be happy and it's the only way. So Satan's trying to block you and say, if you give up that, you can't give up that or you can't serve Jesus unless you give up that. That's a lie. Just ask Jesus into your heart. Go to my website. It's on there. You can find it. Just ask him into your heart and say, just take my life. Whatever you want me to do, I'm here. Just show me. And he'll show you. And by one, you can watch these periscopes on, on the YouTube. But number two, he will he will show you. You just tell him. And you don't have to stop things. You just ask him to come into your life. So we're talking about, um, we're motivated by our desire to serve the Lord. That's what makes us believe. Okay. Um, stand in faith. Okay. The scripture again is, I walk and live by faith so I can please God. That's Hebrews eleven six. But what's so interesting is that the Lord told me to talk about Romans 1.17. In Romans 10 17 and I have heard this and if you have had any background in faith you've heard them before as well but I want to read to you the King James and then I want to educate you like God educated me through the mirror Bible and so Romans 1 17 in the King James Bible it's very simple for therein is the righteousness of God and we talked about that yesterday that's your right standing with God you're saying this so I'm gonna read it like that for therein is your right with God your right of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith. Well, when I read that, I was like, yippee I -A, but I really didn't know how, what that meant and how to do that. So how do we get that faith is what I meant. So, okay, that's a great scripture, but I needed to know. I didn't really grasp it at the time, and I didn't even know I didn't grasp it. 
So hold that thought for a second and let's go to Romans 10, 17 in the King James. I have a point to this, so just hang with me. All right, Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So remember the other scripture was, The just shall live by faith. Well, how do you live by faith? You live by faith by hearing and hearing the word of God. Well, before the mirror translation from Francois and Lydia de Toy, and then I'll show you in a second, I just took it by faith, just believed that hearing, hearing the word of God, I would listen to preachers that, that were speaking the right thing. Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, Bill Winston, they were speaking the word of God, and they have results for 20 plus years. Those are the ones the Lord told me to listen to, and only those. I'll have to put that in. Because there's no contamination. I'm not judging anyone, but God is very, very, very specific on not being not being deceived with doctrines and not being deceived with opinions. God's word is God's word and there's no deviating. And if you don't understand something, go to the word, he'll help you. But those three men of God and their wives know the word of God. And they have no idea that I'm talking about them, but I don't care because the Lord told me to say it. They are, them and their ministries are fertile ground, and they do their best to serve God just like Jesus Christ. So glory to God for them. Thank you, Father. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let's go to the mirror translation. This is a mirror Bible. It's the blue. And the Lord said to go this way. He said, go to Romans 10, 17 in the mirror, and it's page 85. And these are the topics he wanted me to read out loud again. He said, it is clear then that faith's source, so that's your your source, is found in the content of the message heard. The message is Christ. And we learned this from Kenneth. Christ, if you translate in the Hebrew, it means the anointed and hit the anointed one. So you always look at Christ. It's not just Jesus' last name. So faith source is found in the content of the message, and the message is Christ. So faith source is found in the anointing and his anointed, the anointed one and his anointing. Let's go to this part. Faith comes out of the word that reveals Christ, the anointed, the anointed one. I think of it also as the grace, the power, the blessing, the glory. Okay? So this is supposed to be helping you understand that faith is going to come, not just been hearing a lot of preachers. It says from hearing the word of God, which the message is Christ, which the message is the anointing, which the message is the power, the blessing. Kenneth Copeland has a very, very good book. It's the best book I've ever read. Um, when it comes to a natural book, The Blessing from Kenneth Copeland. And it taught me how to understand that the blessing, the power, the glory that we have, what God ha what God gave us, the anointing. So then the mirror Bible helped me understand our righteousness, which is the same thing, knowing that we have the power, the blessings, being equal with Jesus because Jesus is in us. So that book helped me understand this, the anointing, the power. All right, so then it talks about the faith comes out of the world. So it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, well, you got to hear the word of God, but the word, the message it said is Christ, the anointing. So if you're hearing the word of God, quote, from preachers, and it's not anointed, it doesn't have power, there's a scripture that says, um, well, it just, it says there are preachers that don't have the power within. That means that they're not, it's not full of the anointing, and it's not, it's not bringing God glory, so it's not the right thing. So they just don't know yet. So they'll, they'll start knowing. So let's read this next point here. This is very important. The good news is the fact that the cross of Christ, the anointing, was a success. God rescued the life of our design. This is very important. Our design, the way he created us before he formed this whole world. We are very special and we are twins with Jesus. He redeemed. He bought back. He got back. He paid for it, but he bought back our innocence. Man would never again be judged righteous or unrighteous by our own ability to obey laws, moral laws. Praise God. Because growing up, I was part of a denomination that I always felt if it was about being perfect, about performance. And it, I'm not knocking the denomination. I'm knocking Satan. That's why I'm not saying the denomination. Because it's not that. It's Satan trying to trap people. Religion traps. The word of God sets free. Man would never again be judged righteous or unrighteous. Okay, we just said that. It is not about what man must or must not do, but it's about what Jesus has done. God now persuades everyone to believe what he knows to be true about them. What's true about you 
is that if you're a human being, you are so special. You don't even have to believe in God. But I'll tell you right now, you are so special. God created you with a very strong purpose in mind, and he wants to be your father. And if you don't believe it and you think it's hokey, that's okay. But I beg you to watch my periscopes because the Holy Spirit will come in and he'll show you. He'll change you. You could just say, I don't believe this stuff, but I want to believe. Well, just listen. If you say that, he'll come in. He will because I've prayed for you. I've already prayed for anybody watching on YouTube channel or Periscope that they get the fullness of God. That is why I'm doing these awesome broadcasts. It's so fun. All right. One last point, uh, excuse me, is um, to go now to Roman 7, 117, 117 in the mirror, because we talked about that before. So the whole point is learning about faith. Faith comes by hearing, but it's not just hearing people talk about God. It's hearing the anointed message. It's the Christ that set us free. It has to be that. Or it's not going to come. Faith won't come just by hearing a preacher. It's got to come by the right words, the um, uncom uncompromised word of God, which is right here what we're reading. So let's go to Romans 117, and this will be the last part of today. It says, um, let's see, okay, herein lies the secret of the power of the gospel. There is no good news until the righteousness of God is revealed. We talked about this the other day, but I did the next paragraph, the next sentence, but I'm not doing that today. But this is the secret of the power of the gospel. That's why a lot of people you know might attend church their whole life, but they don't have any blessings and they're still broke and they're always sick and they're in the hospital. It's because they don't know. They don't know the power of the gospel. They don't understand. They think that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I'm hearing the word of God. Well, they're not. They're not hearing the word. If you're hearing the word of God on a consistent basis, your life will always be flourishing. You'll always be fruitful. If you're hearing the word of God on a continual basis and you're not fruitful, it's something you're doing is wrong. It's never God. So either you're not hearing the right thing, you're not surrendered and open-minded, or you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to come in. But most likely it's because you're hearing the wrong thing or not watching your words. But regardless. Okay, the next part. Righteousness by his faith defines life. It's really a mouthful if you really understand righteousness, right standing with God, one in the same, being one in the same with Jesus, by God's faith defines our life. So it's exactly what I've been trying to say if you're not living in victory, it's because you don't know who you are. God rescued the life of our design. Let me just say it this way. God rescued the life of your design and redeemed your innocence. What this means is that you do not have to be trapped by the rules and laws of the world. You might say, well, I don't know how else to do it. Well, God has told me that he is moving fast. And if you just ask for him, he will show you. And there are people that have inventions. There are people that have businesses. There are people that have wealth that are coming to you. But all you have to do, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to plan anything. You just have to get in the word of God daily, daily, twice a day, three times. And, and love it like this mirror Bible. If you don't like this mirror Bible, I don't know. Your wood is wet. It's not burning. you got to you just got to keep doing it till it gets in. But righteousness by his faith defines life. God rescued the life of our design and redeemed our innocence. So the fact of the matter is, God has a plan for us. He already did it through Jesus. I'm just trying to help you see who you are in Jesus. You are so special. You are just so special. So it goes back to the very first um, scripture we talked about, Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But we said through these scriptures that if you don't, and then how do you get faith? By hearing and hearing the word of God. But what if you're doing those things and you're not having faith? It's because you're not hearing the message, the anointed one, Christ, the victory, the blessing. You're not hearing the bless. You're not hearing that. That's the good news and who you are in Christ. So you can't please God if you, and if you don't have faith, but you can't have faith unless you're hearing the right thing. So get in the word of God and let him teach you. And if you're going to the wrong church, I'm not saying stop that, but Go to my website and find out from the preachers that I have on there, and they will teach you. Their websites are huge. They have vast resources. So it's not about what we're doing here on this Periscope. It's to lead you to these folks that have been living this way forever because Jesus sent them so we can all live like Jesus and live in victory every day of our life. I love you so much. Get in the Word of God. Pray, 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 and live in agape love, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.